Hi, this is Mario with Tax Tutor. I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can exchange a building completely tax-free. In the tax world, this is called a 1031 exchange. For a 1031 exchange, before the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, you used to be able to use a 1031 exchange for all sorts of things. You could use them for real property, you could use them for personal property, which meant that if you had a car and you went to, a, to change your car or exchange your car for another one or trade it in for another one, that could be considered a 1031 exchange. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017, they limited 1031 exchanges to only real Okay, they exchange it to, or limited it to only real property. So real property means real estate. It means a piece of land. It means a rental property. It means a residential property. It means a commercial property. It does not mean your personal residence. You cannot do a 1031 exchange on your personal residence or any asset that you own personally. However, for a personal residence, they have a much better exclusion. Um, for a married filing jointly person, you can exclude up to half a million dollars of gain, just completely tax-free without having to exchange it. A 1031 exchange means that you're going to pay tax on that someday. So you don't really want to do a 1031 exchange on your personal residence, but it could be very beneficial to do one on an investment property or a property that's held for business. The other important part of a 1031 is to remember that it has to be like kind. So a 1031 exchange is often called a like kind exchange for the reason that you are exchanging like kind property. So in this case where you can only exchange real property, the reason why you hold that property needs to have a like kind of the property that you're purchasing. So if you own a residential rental property and you want to exchange that for another piece of property, it needs to be a rental property as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be residential. It could be a commercial property, but you do have to hold it for the same purpose, whether it's a rental or an investment or something along those lines. Now, there are very specific steps that you have to take when doing a 1031 transaction. So uh, the first step is that you have to identify a property to sell. So you have to look at your portfolio of properties and say, okay, this property, this specific property is one that I want to sell. Uh, the second thing that you need to do is get what is called a QI or a qualified intermediary involved is what happens inside of a 1031 exchange is that you cannot take possession of any of the funds or any of the money in the exchange. That it becomes immediately taxable to you. I've had people that have sold a piece of property and then come to me afterward and said, hey, I wanna do a 1031 exchange, and I have to be in the unfortunate position to tell them that it's not going to work because it didn't get set up properly to begin with. So you have to get a QI, a qualified intermediary involved. And then when that property is sold, all of the money goes to that qualified intermediary. Then um, you have step number three, which is you have 45 days uh, to identify a replacement property. So once you have identified what you're gonna sell, once you've sold that property, you have 45 days from the sale of that property and the money's gone to the qualified intermediary, he's, that, that qualified he or she's holding onto that money, you have 45 days to identify a property that you want to purchase. And then the last number that we have is 100, let me fix this here, 180 days. From the sale of your original property, you have 180 days to close on that new property. And that's the, the steps that you take. You identify a property to sell, you get a qualified intermediary involved that takes possession of the money of the sale. You then have 45 days from that sale to identify a new property, and then you have 180 days from the sale to close on that new property. Now, something important to keep in mind is in these transactions, there's also, there's usually something called boot. 
Boot means that you received cash in the exchange or your debt was reduced as a result of the exchange. Both of those will cause taxable, cause the 1031 to become taxable transaction. Because a 1031 exchange is something that you need to generally exchange up into. You need to go into a bigger property that requires you to either put more money in to buy that bigger property or to get more debt to acquire that, that property. If you downgrade, if you take a property and you buy a smaller one, and as a result of that, you either end up getting cash as part of that transaction, or you end up reducing the amount of debt that you have involved in that property, that is considered boot and becomes taxable to you. So that's important to have a qualified intermediary involved to make sure that you don't take possession of any of the cash. And when that transaction happens, make sure that you're putting more money into that transaction, either through more cash or more debt, so that you can avoid uh, recognizing boot and recognizing a taxable transaction. And that is how 1031 exchanges work. I hope you enjoyed that video and learned more about taxes in the process. My name is Merrill Taylor and my business is TaxTutor.com. I would like to make a special invitation to anybody that owns a bookkeeping business. If you currently own a bookkeeping business and you serve your clients doing bookkeeping, I would invite you to take a look at adding tax preparation to your bookkeeping business. Is what we found from working with bookkeepers and clients over the years is that those bookkeepers that add tax preparation to their bookkeeping business are better, better able to serve their clients because their clients are looking for someone who can both offer bookkeeping as well as tax preparation. They want someone who is well-rounded, they want one person that they can go to and get help and assistance with both their books and their taxes without having to hire two separate people to, to work through that process for them. If you are interested in adding tax preparation to your bookkeeping business, visit taxtutor.com and learn more about how we help bookkeepers to do that in the process.